And I just wanted to talk about each one of us to be faithful, but faithful with little things. And it was intended to both be an encouragement, but also to lay down principles of how God works with us. Because wherever we are at, God always has a wise way to help us. Even if we are people who have heard and heard and heard and learned and know and know, and we know so much that we could talk to somebody else, and yet we still seem to be stuck, God has a way to help us. Okay? I want to remind you, before we really get going here, that God's love for you has no bound. It has no limit. His planning and His care for you is excellent, it's wise, it's, it's powerful. You are not a problem for the Lord. And even if you are, and there's nobody who is not like this, if you are experiencing much less than what God has made possible for you, take courage. God has a way to take you from where you are to where He has meant for you to be from not so full to being full. Okay? He has a way. He has a way. The Lord is our shepherd, Psalm 23 says. We do not lack. Okay? In our experience, fair enough. We might be able to describe it as lack. But because the Lord is our shepherd, my soul relax. He has a way to help me. By saying that, I don't want to diminish the need for us to, at times, repent. Okay? By that, I don't mean feel bad about yourself and act all sorry and all that kind of stuff. I don't merely mean that. There are times when, if there is no sorrow over what you have done, then perhaps you're not really perceiving how what you have done is seen by the Lord. Okay? So, I don't mean to throw out the baby with the bathwater. But at the end of the day, repent means to change your mind and therefore change your direction. Okay? It isn't merely, I'm sorry, in the sense of, I don't like what's going on. I'm sorry that it's been this way. Okay, fine, great, but that's not repentance. Repentance means, and so I'm willing to change back or change to how you want me to do things, God. Okay? So there is a place for our experience to change by us changing what we do. No question. But I just do want to remind you, God sees it, knows it, has no problem with you, and will bring you into it as you respond, of course. Okay? And in view of that, we started talking about um, this principle that is in the Bible that is laid out really through all of Scripture about being faithful with little. Okay? Meaning, the grand things that God wants to do for you always start with little bits. We may not be able to see the whole plan of God unfold. We just have little pieces. But what is required of us is to be faithful with those little pieces. Okay? The working out of the grander design of God is God's business. Our business is to be faithful with whatever little bit that we have, right? And we used Abraham as our uh, example. We could use other people like David. David is an excellent example for each one of us to learn from. David was anointed as king. But that doesn't mean he just stepped into his kingdom the day he was anointed. He was a, he was a young fellow. Right? He was a teenager when God said, you are going to rule. He anointed him. He empowered him for what he had been called to do. But getting to the place where he actually was ruling as king, there was a long journey, seemingly long for him. Many of the psalms that we sing where he's going, what's going on? Like, why is this happening? Come from that time when he was basically running from, for his life from Saul and other enemies. But in that journey, even though David could not see how this was going to work out, David learned to be faithful. Even the lead up to David being anointed as king was a journey of David being faithful. He was a shepherd. 
He was a shepherd boy. And inasmuch as we have these romantic pictures of shepherd in the church, remember, shepherd was like the lousy job. It was the cleaning out the porta potties job. Okay? It was like the lowest of the low. You're not good for anything else, so be a shepherd kind of thing. Right? His dad did not even remember him when he was called, to, when his dad was told to bring all of his sons before him. Right? He was not highly regarded. And yet, David, in the job of taking care of smelly sheep, actually, I don't know if they're smelly, okay? but, but it's, it's a, it's a low-end job. But in that low-end job, he was faithful. And it was not like God had forgotten about him. In him learning to trust God, to deal with bears, to deal with lions, to watch over his sheep, to value every one of the sheep, what was God doing? He was building a king after his own heart. He was building a king after his own heart. And then he gets anointed. Oh, finally, recognition. No. Then he runs for his life. And at every turn, he passes the test of being faithful with the little bit that he had, the little bit that he understood. Okay? So this is not a principle that is just, even though we're going to read one verse that has to do with it, it's not just a principle that is here and there. It is a pattern in how a person learns to walk with God. Okay? And I think it's important for us both to understand that there is that pattern, but also to take courage wherever you are, however messed up it is in your life right now. And I don't care whether you're five or 500. This rule remains. Be faithful with what is in your hand right now. Be faithful with what is going on right now. It may very well be that the mess that you're having to deal with is because of a lack of faithfulness in things. You know, uh, the passage we're going to read is from Luke chapter 16. Okay, it's a rather famous parable. And again, I recognize that um, before I say that, let me just make sure I took you to the right place here. Huh. I just read it this morning. Bear with me here. Okay, then we'll go to Matthew 25 instead. Matthew 25. We'll begin to read in verse 14. Okay, now, uh, by way of context, what we're going to read is in the midst of of Jesus explaining and expanding upon what is going to happen when he comes again. Okay? Um, remember that the people that he was originally speaking these words to were Jews. No wonder I can't see you clearly. <laughs> they, they were Jews. And to the Jews, certain promises were made by God pertaining to the rule of the Messiah on earth. Remember, there was a time when the Jews were on top, okay, under David particularly. And God had promised to them a king who would reign. And so everything associated with the Messiah, as far as they were concerned, had to do with ruling over the earth. Okay? So their whole thought about Jesus the Messiah was not what we think. They could not yet conceive a larger plan in God that doesn't rule out the Jews reigning with Jesus, but there's all this stuff in between that they had not seen. And Jesus is expounding for them the things that are going to happen when he comes, okay? when he comes to actually rule. Remember, when Jesus was raised from the dead and he was about to depart, be raised up to heaven, do you remember the question that his disciples, having seen all of this stuff, asked? 
is it now when you're going to restore the kingdom to the Jews? Is it now? And he said, it's not for you to know that. Okay? And so they had to get their minds around, there's more going on here than we were aware of. Okay? In the context of that dialogue is what we're about to read. So I just want to say, yes, it is out of context in the larger sense, but the principle is outlined here. Okay? This is in verse 14. The passage in Luke is the parallel of this one. I just seem to have lost the reference to it, so we'll work with this one in Matthew chapter 25. Let me jump back to um, verse 12. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey, who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. Immediately, the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And also the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who also, who had received the one talent, came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid, and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave! You knew that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I scattered no seed? Then you ought to have put my money in the bank. And on the, my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him. And give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given. And he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let me just, in case anybody's wondering about it, that is not a passage that has to do with losing your salvation. He's illustrating a principle, so do not read what he just said as, see, it's possible to lose your salvation. It isn't. It's not what he's talking about. But what I want to draw your attention to is this parable of people being given things, and the requirement upon them was to be faithful with it. Faithful with it meant what? Do something with it. Okay. Now, yes, we can take time, and in another context, what does it mean? Like These guys who were given five made five. Given two, they made two more, right? Given one, he did nothing with it. We could talk about why did he do nothing with it? It had to do with his thought about the master, right? And it also, it's worth identifying, it was a deliberate choice on his part to not do something, right? He deliberately decided to bury it. It wasn't just like he did nothing with it. He decided to do nothing with it. Okay? It was an act of not being faithful. And that's where he got caught out. Okay? But Jesus here says, for to him who has, more will be given. Okay? The one who does not have, even what little he has will be taken away from him. Again, in the context of this parable, there are direct applications, but I want you to see the principle. First of all, in view of this passage and the passage that we read last week from Luke chapter 16, where Jesus said, he who is faithful in a little will be faithful in much. Okay? He who is not faithful in a little won't be faithful in much. First of all, 
you who have believed in the Lord, God has a purpose and a plan to cause you to be one who can receive much. Right? You've been called to eternal life, to abundant life. In other words, the road that you are on is a journey into fullness. You have been purposed to have much. So how do you get there? Well, you can't have much if you're not faithful with little. So the whole principle that underlines what we're talking about is in order to enter into what you have been purposed for, you have to learn and be willing to be faithful with little. Okay? Now, I will also add, that is wonderful news. If you were required to be faithful with much before there was any way you could be, that would be cruel of the Lord. Before there is the ability to do it, you're expected to provide it, produce it. That is unreasonable. Do you recall there is a passage in um, Ephesians where it says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Right? What is he getting at? Now, in that particular case, he's obviously talking about how families are to interact, but you see a principle there. Would it not be the Father in heaven exasperating his children if he required of you what there is no way you could produce? Of course it would be. Of course it would be. It's not what he's like. So, in the midst of our circumstances, okay, and remember, there's always an adversary who's looking to stir things up, talked about this when we talked about watching over our hearts, the need for watching over our hearts. In the midst of the troubles and the things that we have to resolve and we need to make progress in, there's always going to be an accuser who says, this is not fair. If God only would do this or that, it's not fair. It's not fair. Don't fall for the bait. Don't fall for the bait. First of all, that word fair does not belong in your mouth if you belong to the Lord. Okay? It is a trick. It doesn't mean that God is not interested in justice. He is. But I want to first remind you, what he has done for you is not fair. It was not fair that Jesus had to die to redeem you, and yet he did it. Okay? So you're already the recipient of what is not fair. Secondly, the idea of what is fair and what is not fair okay, can be twisted by our adversary to bring us into a place where we behave like that first or the third servant. You're not fair, so I'm not, and we miss out. We miss out. Okay? Now, please, my reluctance in reading Matthew 25 and the parallel in Luke is that it's so easy to misunderstand that if we're not faithful, God gets mad at us. That is not our situation. Okay? But the principle remains. If we stir in our heart the idea that somehow God has not given enough, God has not provided, God has not been fair to me in this, and that's why I am where I am, you're going to get derailed. You're going to get derailed. That's why the devil is interested in stirring up your emotion. Because I think you recognize this about yourself, in as much as you may be a logical, rational creature, boy, does emotion make something feel right, feel true, even though it's completely wrong. Right? So the devil stirs all this stuff up. It's not fair that you have to go through this. You know what? I am a servant of the living God. That word fair is irrelevant. I have been given something to do. I want to be found faithful with it. I'll leave the justice of it to him. Because God is the God of justice. He, it matters to him whether something is just or not. Whether something is righteous or not. But what is your responsibility? It is not to bring about justice in your grand scheme of things. You're just called to be faithful with little things. Okay? Again, I want to make a point of saying, do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's not to say that we should not be interested in justice. We should. Okay? Does anybody recall the simple instruction of God about how to walk with him from Micah? He has told you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Can anybody finish the passage? Pretty famous, but maybe not famous enough. 
to walk justly and to do justly, to walk humbly with your God, a missing one. To love, he has told you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee. But to do justly and to walk, and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Okay? So, we can't just dismiss the idea of justice. We cannot just dismiss the idea of the world is being unjust or a situation is unjust. I, I'm not telling you that. But what I'm trying to tell you is don't get distracted from what is really required, which is faithfulness with a little bit. Okay? God is not forgetful. He knows what you're going through and where you want to get to and why it hasn't happened. But what is on your plate is to be faithful with a little. Okay? So when he says to you, son, be faithful with this, it's not like he's forgotten about what's really going on or the grander picture or anything like that. He knows better than you why it's happened, what's going on, what needs to happen. And the wonderful wisdom of God is, as you're faithful with a little bit, it's not just that your circumstances get addressed. You'll find that he has the ability to address other circumstances also around you that you would never have in your mind to deal with. Right? You know, in the story of Abraham, inasmuch as we're given the perspective of seeing how God worked with Abraham, God was also dealing with other people in that land. And because of Abraham and Abraham's faithfulness, they were blessed. Likewise with us. But what was on Abraham's plate as it is with us is be faithful with what God has given you. Now, lest you think, I have no idea what God has given me, that's always a false idea. Okay? I agree with, I don't know all that needs to be done in this circumstance. But I can always start with something small. He's never put me in a position where there's nothing I can do. For example, in all things, give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So, I don't know why this situation is the way it is. I don't know what i got to do next. Fine, but at least I can give thanks. Father, I just want to start by giving you thanks. You will give me more as I'm faithful with a little, but I want to start by being thankful. You are with me in this. You are for me in this. There is nothing that escapes your notice about this entire thing, and you've got it figured out. Help me now, Father, just to be faithful with the little bits. So here is what I'm going to start with. I just give thanks to you. I just bless your name. You said to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Father, forgive me that I have not been doing that, but now I want to get busy with doing that. Because you are more than enough. You are more than enough. And we just get started. Okay? Be faithful. Show up to work. On time. Be faithful with it. Be diligent. Be, be focused on, this is what I've been given to do. I want to do it with all my heart unto the Lord. Okay? Now when I say be on time, obviously... You know, apply that to your circumstance. Not everybody has a set time limit and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not saying everybody needs to show up at work at 6 a.m. But you have to have a thought, I am being faithful. I am being faithful with what God has given me to do. Part of what God has given me to do is to show up at this place that, I, that employs me, and I want to be faithful. Father, I want you to be pleased with how I deal with my work. I want you to be pleased with how I deal with my... You know, we have... No end of different circumstances in our midst, right? I want to be faithful as a friend. I want to be faithful as a servant of the Lord. I want to be faithful in church with what I've been assigned to do. I want to be faithful because it gets me ready for the more that you have for me. It gets me ready for the more that you have for me. If I'm not going to be faithful with a little, I won't be faithful with much. If the pain of what I am going through now, not having been faithful with little, bothers me. How much more would the pain of not being faithful with much hurt me? And God doesn't have that as his agenda. He wants to only help you. So, to wrap up, wherever you may find yourself to be right now, okay? And by that, I don't mean your geographical location. I mean in life, okay? Uh, you have these things going on, these things going on, these things going on, these things going on. This is working okay. This is terrible. And I don't even want to think about. This is there. 
Wherever you may be, first of all, remember, all that is required of you is to be faithful with the little bit that you do know to do. Okay? One of my concerns about, first and foremost, me, myself, but also us as a church and those around us, is that truth becomes something to know, not something that fuels an action. Right? Truth, from God's perspective, certainly you have to know it, but when it stops at knowing, it doesn't profit you. The man who is blessed is the man who hears and does, right? So um, when I hear this whole matter of being faithful a little, yes, I need to understand the underlying principle. But if I don't get around to actually being faithful with little things, I stay stuck, right? So understand, all that is required of you is to be faithful with the little bit that you do know. Resist the temptation. This is too big. I have no idea what's going on. Why is God? Okay, fine. I, under, I can relate to that, that sort of swirling mind that we can sometimes be in when there's so much going on. But remember, in actual fact, God is asking of you just little bits. His plan is perfect. His way of getting you into where you are meant to be is perfect. Start with being faithful with a little. Faithful does not mean I'm okay with it. It means God is okay with how I've done this. I've been faithful. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Here, have some more. Okay? So, take courage. Wherever is going on, all that's required of you is to be faithful a little. The little can unravel the worst of circumstances as you trust the Lord. Being faithful with the little can unravel the most complicated, messed up, horrible thing as you trust the Lord in it. Be faithful with the little. It is a powerful principle. And each one of us can do it. That's the wonderful thing about it. Even in the mess that I've made, especially when it's because I have not been faithful, ah, God lets me be faithful now. And I can get going with it. Okay? So take these things and please take them to the Lord first and foremost. Do not do anything because Titus said it. It's God who has to be the one saying it to you and then work with them and help somebody else. You know, people are facing all sorts of weird and wacky and complicated and terrible circumstances. If they know the Lord, you can speak to them in one way, but if they don't know the Lord, just say, you know what, God has good things for you. He really does. And even this is not too difficult for the Lord. Let's see what's something small that we can do and see it through. Because God's way, I heard on Sunday, is to be faithful with little things. God wants to help you. You've got to make room for him to do that. Okay? And that always starts with you just doing something small and seeing it through. And that'll snowball. That'll snowball as you do. Okay? Please excuse me if I've simplified it and made it too almost simplistic. I don't mean to do that. But God's way is simple and pure and made for us to follow. Okay? Father, again, what is not of you, blow it away. Make it of no effect. But what is from you, empower by your Spirit, and bring us to a place of being captured by it, that we might do it. And I thank you that all you have called us to do, at the end of the day, all you've called us to do today is to be faithful with the little things that we know. And I ask you to work with each one of us so that we can hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. So that when you come back, you do find faith here on the earth, in us and in, in this church at the very least, if not further afield. Teach us, Father. Work with us. L help us to love the idea of being faithful with a little so that we can see you work in us and through us. Again, Father, what is not of you, blow it away. Make it of no effect. But what is yours, produce in us the fruit of it that pleases you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen.